I'm Carlos Brooklyn Fergus Lover. I'm here at the Morbid Anatomy Museum with Alexis Carl. Hello. Perfumer Alexis Carl, how are you today? I'm very well. So nice to see you. So lovely to see you. She smells wonderful. I wish you could smell her. <laughs> She's wearing one of her perfumes. I'm wearing Dreaming Eternal. Awesome. That's, I love that name. Thank you. It's from um, uh, my Utopian Body series, mm -hmm. which Morbid Anatomy actually has. And it's um, it, the whole fragrance uh, line it's four perfumes and they're an olfactory poem okay so it starts out with and you smell this body made luminous yes I like that one I like the one a lot dark chocolatey secret sacred ciphered the harmony of being I'm sorry uh, dreaming that, eternal <laughs> I had I did a film remember we did that giveaway for yes yes I had a little tongue tied with secret sacred ciphered <laughs> awesome so what's the theme of well those the that suite of perfumes, the um, Morbid Anatomy, I'm sorry, not Morbid Anatomy, at Morbid Anatomy, but um, it's uh, Utopian Body and it's actually was inspired by Michel Foucault's mm -hmm. Utopian Body essay. Okay. So it's this, um, the, the general theme is that um, you're never really existing as a human in a mm -hmm. body without the gaze of a lover. And so it kind of goes on to explain like the touch and the gaze and then the recognition of the self. And so the perfumes are really based on that philosophy. So they go through this kind of dark sensual aspect mm -hmm. into something that's decoding the body with secret sacred cipher. The harmony of being is the balance of two people. Mm -hmm. And then dreaming eternal is literally the contented dreams of lovers. And this so. is pretty recent. Dreaming this eternal. is just out. Okay. I mean, I've literally just and it's exclusive for the the morbid No, um, the suite of these perfumes mm -hmm. is available oh, okay. in general. Whoever wants it. That's another. It. You have a well a that's, bespoke. Exactly. Okay, so the it. bespoke. I know I have a bunch. So morbid anatomy museum. I'm the house perfumer. Okay. Of morbid anatomy museum, and. Um, it, what that entails is me creating certain projects for them mm -hmm. and also having kind of my work exclusively here, okay. which is really totally lovely. It's very exciting. It is. And I love Morbid Anatomy. It's, a, it's just this, uh, we were discussing before, but it's this kind of um, extraordinary place that's art and literature. We're in the library right now. There's mm -hmm. an exhibition next door. There's a lecture hall downstairs. Mm -hmm. I, I lecture here quite a lot. So it's a real place for scholars and artists. Um, and writers and and creators so, and and singers and singers I'm a singer too <laughs> but of like of the dark we have a lot in common we do we do I know we really do um, but of the dark kind of the darker realm and I think mm -hmm. that's really what um, morbid anatomy and my perfumes are about mm -hmm. is this finding this kind of ritualistic aspect of fragrance um, maybe the darker side of beauty and bringing that to the surface and so. That's where we ended up talking about or creating morbid anatomy. Facility. Yeah, we should do some specific. I know, I know, some readers might think morbid anatomy, uh, dark side of perfume. <laughs> what are they like? They're not challenging fragrances. No, they're I mean, not. you smell, you smell beautiful. Thank you. You, you smell amazing. He's <laughs> like sniffing me. Um, they're not. They're not. No, they're not 
difficult fragrances. Okay. And it, it, what they are is their narrative and they're literal. So okay. um, Morbid Anatomy Bespoke, I'm literally creating 10 accords of which I will create a custom fragrance for a client who comes to this beautiful library hmm. and experiences the, the museum as such. And from the accords, I will create create this custom fragrance. Um, but the court accords themselves are fragrances themselves. Mm -hmm. So they will also be uh, put out as a line. That's a surprise. <laughs> but you heard it right first, right? You're the first one. <laughs> the first one to know. So, um, and those are thus far, I'm working on the labels, but thus far they're going to be these kind of dropper bottles, but green. Mm -hmm. uh, more like the kind of the old uh, laudanum bottles. You'll drop yeah, yeah. the oil and you'll drop them on your wrists. Um, so, it, you know, the cords will be fragrances themselves. Mm -hmm. So example, this this is called Exquisite Corpse. That's oh it's, boy. <laughs> but it's based on a, sur a book of surrealism. Okay. Um, and it's, it has a real, it's yeah, it has a real body scent. Uh, literally, it's a body accord I created along with ambergris and some secret. So you wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine this. It smells good. Like it smells like skin. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a skin <laughs> note. Um, other ones I have are Beltane, which is a celebration of the Beltane Festival. It's a Wiccan festival, and it uh, embraces the, the, the spring flowers and the spring harvest. Oh boy! Wow! Right? So it's it's petigrain, so flower and rose and mimosa oh, that's nice. and grass and greens, like really really fresh notes. Well, these are oils, yes. Yes, those are oil bees. And I have other ones like Grimoire. I want you to smell Grimoire because. She always has an, an idea of what she, she'll think I like, and she, she usually hits it on, <laughs> on the try. head. I <laughs> Grimoire is an old book. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, really, Grimoire is a witch's book. And it's where you, you write all of your spells, um, history, mm -hmm. family histories. So Grimoire, I, this is a little more difficult to smell because out of the bottle, it doesn't quite smell as it should. You need to give it a second, but it has... I'll put it in my hand. It has an old book scent, but it really needs to embrace the skin. Mm -hmm. There we are. You know, so maybe this scent on its own, you know, it is quite literal. It's a, mm -hmm. It smells like an old book. However, Grimoire blended with Beltane. I was going to ask, they're blendable. Absolutely. And a little bit of Exquisite Corpse that, would be gorgeous to together. Exquisite um, Corpse? <laughs> I, I'll put that on. It smells really good. Um, I have to find it. <laughs> Here's exquisite corpse. And then I have bases like corporeal, earthbound, and mm -hmm. skyclad. So to represent the elements of human, earth, mm -hmm. and the stars. So I have these celestial notes as well. Then now you know we're in Brooklyn. It wouldn't, it <laughs> wouldn't be a New York City video without some <laughs> sirens, alarms. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's true, but I kind of like it. We can cut it out, yeah. Keeping and it real, right? So that's a base that you know, a base that we'll end up working with. So much better on skin. It's always better on skin, I find. My scents are skin scents. They're mm -hmm. really they're not made to be sprayed in the air and smell that way. They're made to adhere to the skin and I really believe in the fact All of your work or, all or of this my particular work. all of my work. I feel like I mean because it's emanating from you. I can yeah, I, as soon as I came in to hug you. I could it's it's like I well, yeah right it's like you want your your body is the base. I, I really believe in this that the mm -hmm. body is the base. And mm -hmm. there's there's certainly other perfumers who don't feel that way. Um I know some who actually spray in the air to create I, I can't do that. I need to smell skin I feel that embraces the individuality oh, of the scent really on someone. Oh, you need this. Oh my God. Like, wow, you're an exquisite corpse. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and then, um, so the bespoke is, I'm really excited about because it it's very, 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 very mm -hmm. new. And literally this is like Carlos's exclusive on this. So thank you for this. Breaking, mm -hmm. the breaking story <laughs> is morbid anatomy bespoke. Um, and we're really kickstarting that right now. And we're just getting that ready. Um, that's Dreaming Eternal, which I'm wearing. That's what and you're then, wearing. It smells really good. I'm so happy you like it. No, I do. I, I'm, I'm not just blowing... <laughs> blowing fragrance? <you> know. <laughs> <laughs> it smells good on you. It, and it, and it yeah. has... You, you, have a, you have a certain style that mm. I can pinpoint. Oh, I appreciate that. You know, a, a lot of... You know, there's a lot of perfume out there. There's a lot of natural stuff. Not everything is great. You yeah. Know, and I can't say that I, I love all of them. But, you know, your work and Maria's work, she does work with... 
Maria McElroy that you remember My from Aroma sister. and they have a perfume house together called House of Cherry Bomb. Yeah. And um I I I dig your style Thank girl. You. Well we, we love working together and Maria and I really support each other's individual work. So we work a lot. We, you know, I'll call her and say, I, I'm I'm missing a note. What do I do? What do I do? And she's like, try this, try that, you know. So we really we really inspire each other. And then this is totally different. This is Dangerous Beauty. So I lecture at Morbid Anatomy as well. Mm -hmm. And I did a lecture on the, it called Dangerous Beauty, which was the darker side of Victorian cosmetics. Mm -hmm. So basically it was like the, de the deadly, um, dangerous components of cosmetics within the Victorian era. So um, I based a bunch of, a little, again, another, another suite of things um, for that. And, I, I didn't use deadly components, mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't I'm worry. Not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like danger. You come to my. So I, what I did is I, I researched. I, I research a lot because mm -hmm. I work with Metropolitan Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, lecture there on beauty. I did a very similar lecture there. Mm -hmm. So my research brought me to these incredible recipes from the 1800s, um, from a women's magazine, which were just phenomenal. About four different magazines, and. Um, I actually, so I based a fragrance on that, um, one of them, and this is called Dangerous Beauty. Mm -hmm. It's all natural. It's basically a scent that a Victorian woman would create in her own kitchen. Okay. You know, in her, like, using the garden, garden flowers. I think you should spray it on because it's, it's, it's like very, very herbaceous and light. It's not necessarily your kind of scent, okay. you know, but, but at the same time, it's an interesting, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's not even my scent. But it's an interesting, you know, and, and a lot of people like it because it's it's all natural. It's very very light. It's very flowery, you know, herbaceous flower. And then, along with it, I created a, <coughs> oh, sorry, a brandy, a French brandy rose toner, and a a lippy. So it's uh, <laughs> actually a lip rouge and um, like a what a cheek rouge and lip rouge. Mm -hmm. And it's made with cochineal beetle, crushed beetle. So which is what most are made of. Did you know that? No. Yes. Yeah, so, so the real red. Well, that is color, red. that carmine. The, Wait. I read an article of, yeah. that a lot, food coloring red is mostly from this. Yeah, beetle. it's so sad, but it is from that. So actually, I created it that way from the cochineal, um, rather than using uh, deadly like leads and such, which were also used during the time. Mm -hmm. So no the thing about morbid anatomy is I, I get to explore through my scholarly research, and then mm -hmm. I get to bring it into creation, and I have a forum for it. So it's so fun because I can do something that's crazy. This is never my style, mm -hmm. but it's like, I really like it. And then I get to do something like this, which is very much my style. And you get to do some artwork. This oh, is, yes. her, this is her work, <laughs> by the true. way. I'm, a, I'm also a painter and a sculptor and I make films. So um, Morbid Anatomy has also been very gracious and has actually asked for a bunch of my sculptures. So I, we, oh. we present my fragrances along with my sculptures. Why haven't I come to an event or anything? I'm sure I must I have missed I think a few. you've been busy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry about that. I, I, I tend to be busy a lot, but um, I'll definitely have to check one, of, one out of these days. I would love to. And there's more coming. I'm doing more. I'm going to be doing lectures on... The next one is Art and Sense, mm -hmm. I believe, um, which is based on a lecture I'm going to be doing at Pratt Institute okay. through this French perfume company, <coughs> or French school called saint Liam Sen. So, um, but it's going to be a little darker, a little edgier. So I think what I'm going to do. Darker than this? Even, oh, I know. For me, this isn't dark. <laughs> I mean, I'm a goth, you know, I was old goth. Um, I'm going to do, I think it's going to be Sinners, the, the Scent of Sin, like, oh, Sinners, the Scent of Seduction. So it's going to be all about the human body and equating these very sensual imagery from like symbolist era of art along with fragrances. Um, and then as a balance I'll have into the clouds the scent of angels and then there'll be this nice. you know the, the idea of the angelic scent what is along with with uh, paintings such as Bouguereau and such so you know this in Tiepolo you know what is this kind of scent mm -hmm. how do you equate art and scent this is really great that you found <clears throat> this place as you were telling me before you can you're perfuming perfuming per <laughs> perfuming per perfumery creating. <laughs> and creating perfume uh, you know your artwork your scholarly work as you said mm -hmm. And um, it's just really great. You, you seem really happy. I, am. I mean, you're always happy whenever I see you, but you, you seem exceptionally happy here. Well, I feel like, you know, for me, Morbid Anatomy has is such a community. And 
I think that that's part of it is that I, you know, I can call up this really extraordinary alchemist that I met here mm -hmm. and ask him questions and then I can talk to another woman who, you know, is a, is a, expert on, on gothic fashion and culture and I can ask her some questions and all that ends up informing my own work and I hope I can do the same for them mm -hmm. um, and you know I, I was discussing before there's a beautiful exhibit right behind us of these anatomical sculptures mm -hmm. I took a little footage so oh, I'll get good. to see it they're the, so the fascinating and I met the collectors who were just beautiful people and wonderful and they mentioned that they had a mummy head and they asked me to come and smell it so I could discern the different notes possibly. I could I could see you yeah, collaborating I, on a project like that. And trying to figure out, you know, what it is and how to make it and what, what are the resins and I mean I'll never get a chance to do something like that. No. I mean, even at the Metropolitan you gotta Museum. Do it. Yeah, you gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like it's a it's it's a, it's as much as a creative outlet and scholarly place, mm -hmm. it's also this community. And the people that run it and work here are have become friends of mine and they're so encouraging. That's great. Beautiful thing. Yeah, so I, I feel very fortunate and to be to be doing this project and to be you know having my work exhibited here and so where can my subscribers find you online oh I, I, you always ask me i always forget um <laughs> <laughs> well let's see <laughs> now i'm forgetting again um body made luminous dot tumblr dot com is okay. my blog um and my website is in progress but the, that at least will get you that's going to be something I can just imagine what you have yeah. cooking in your brain. Kind of interesting, yeah. <laughs> sent, sent by Alexis on on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime that they, anyone wants to reach out to me, ask me some questions, I really love talking to. to awesome. People. Yeah, you, you're very responsive. You're very warm. You're, Thank you're you. Involved. So, um, and so here, more where, anatomy. Where can they order your perfumes if they'd like to? Um, actually, from uh, oh, I have an Etsy site as well. So sent by Alexis on Etsy. Okay. And, and everything's there, all the collections. Well, no, this this is ex oh, I should have mentioned this is exclusively at Morbid Anatomy at okay. the moment. So, and this is just the Morbid Anatomy bespoke is just starting. Okay. So the Accords will be available as fragrances for mm -hmm. sale late summer at Morbid Anatomy, and we're going to do shipping. Do they have a website? Yes, they do, and okay. they, that will be on the website. Um, they can always call and ask about my fragrances mm -hmm. here too. So they do that. Plus, my Etsy site takes care of my Utopian body line. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on getting everything together. Did, at the did we smell that yet? Utopian. We that's did. that's part of this dream. So, so I so I like this. Yeah, that's the one I'm wearing. Oh wow. And then the other one. Oh yeah, you need these. <laughs> and this, even this. It's a little nicer now. Yeah, well, you know, at first it's a little sprayed. brash, actually, mm -hmm. because it's an herbaceous note. And I, it's, again, it's not my usual, but um, it settles down with violet. So it kind of, it kind of calms down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it goes, it, you know, it's, it's for the, it's for a woman who's um, really uh, looking for something that's a little more clean scent. Uh, in general, my notes are dirty. Okay. I, I, I like you dirty. dirty. Girl, yeah. I know. <laughs> I like dirty notes. Um, darker, dirtier, a little more heady. Don't don't let her make you nervous. They're really nice. She uses dirty notes, but they're not unwearable perfumes by no, any means. No, no, no. I, I, I like exactly. I, my thing. What I love is that the balance of light and dark. I should say that rather okay. than just dirty. I like. Um, I want a, a strain of something earthy running through mm -hmm. to, to, to hold down and balance airier notes. Okay. So I'm really interested in those in the balance, like literally just like um, like painting, you know, light and dark yeah, always. Yes. So I think for me that's really what my work as a whole is about, the balance of light and dark. How long, <laughs> how long have you been, when did you decide you wanted to be a perfumer and how long have you been doing it? Oh my gosh, let me think. Well. I started creating fragrances about 2004, okay. and then I launched at Henry Bendel in 2005. Nice. So I just went full steam ahead, and that's where I met Maria. Was wow. Henry Bendel. Um, so I'm a self-taught artisanal perfumer, okay. and a lot of my work. A lot of my instruction came from history, so I, I you know, I'm supported by the Metropolitan Museum mm -hmm. to research. So I do research and lecture there. Um, I wouldn't say 
like supported, like they, I don't have a scholarship or anything, <laughs> but they, they just, they again give me a forum as mm -hmm. well and I, they, they, they bring me in for That's lectures. Awesome. So, I mean, I, I guess, yes, they do support me sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where my, my learning was mm -hmm. really. Um, and then using the ideas of art, of painting and balance again, to to kind of pull, put that into play with fragrance. Mm -hmm. You know, so the same idea of like the way you're painting and you're, you're balancing colors and your tonality and composition, I find it's the same idea with fragrance. A or music of, or, or blending music. harmonies. And, and, right, and I'm a musician, so it's the same exact thing as you know as a musician. You're blending harmonies, you're writing music. It's, it's all, you know, this beautiful cacophony of notes that is mm -hmm. ends up becoming hopefully a beautiful piece of music. Yeah. So olfactory poems, factory music. This is great. I have a great time. <laughs> Me too. Thank you for visiting. So anything, anything you want to say in conclusion of this cute little interview? <laughs> um, come see me here. You know, come see this beautiful, extraordinary place. I'll put a link down below on the video. It's very beautiful. It's not... Um, don't be scared of the name. I think in general, a lot of people hear morbid. I was a little nervous on my way here. I, I won't lie. Yeah, they get a little nervous. Um, it is, and it's a very, very welcoming place. Um, it's a, it really is a place of learning. Mm -hmm. There's uh, wonderful lectures two to three times a week by mm -hmm. extraordinary scholars. I mean, it's so special. Um, there's beautiful artisanal jewelry and my fragrances and books downstairs. There's this gorgeous library here of really interesting exhibitions in the gallery. So it's a wonderful museum. It's very special. Um, so visit, visit me. You know, come well, I'm glad I finally made it. It's wonderful me to too. see you. You smell great. Your line smells Thank great. Thank you. And, uh, uh, coming from you, I, I really, really appreciate it. You're the best. <laughs> All right, so thanks for your time. This Thank was a you. lot of fun. And then we'll see you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs> Carlos, thank you so much for visiting me today here at Morbid Anatomy Museum. I have a giveaway and it is a half ounce bottle of Oracle that is from my Morbid Bespoke line. So to get this bottle, all you need to do is subscribe to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. And in the comment section, Please tell us what you think of the interview, if you have anything specific that you found really interesting. We'd love to hear. And we would love for you to be the first person to try this line, or rather this fragrance, before it's actually out for the public. Thank you so much again, and have a beautifully fragrant day. Brooklyn's